here I've got a nice functional equation that came from a training set for the Indian Mathematical Olympiad. And one thing that I really like about this problem is that it is a functional equation that involves trigonometric functions. And I think that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Our goal is to find all functions from r to r such that f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y minus 2 sine x sine y. So before we really dive into the problem, it's actually going to be pretty useful to find the value of f at 0. This is like a pretty standard first step for all of these. So how can we find the value of f at 0? Well, we're going to set one of these variables equal to 0 and allow the other one to be free. So I'm going to say that x is a so-called free variable, and I'll set y equal to 0. And then with that setup, let's see what our given functional equation turns into. So we're going to have f of x plus 0 equals f of 0 times f of x. I've changed the order there just to make it look a little nicer. Minus 2 sine of x times sine of 0. But it's well known that sine of 0 is equal to 0. Okay, so let's see. This means that f of x times 1 minus f of 0 is equal to 0, just by moving everything to one side of the equation and factoring. That gives us two distinct possibilities. So the first possibility is that f of x equals 0 for all real numbers x. In other words, we've got the constant function of 0. But I'll let you guys check that that is actually impossible in this setup. What I mean by that is that the constant function 0 does not satisfy this functional equation, so we can't use that. So our other possibility is that f of 0 is equal to 1. And this possibility actually works. Well, obviously it has to work, otherwise there would be no such function, which I guess is a suitable solution, but not very motivating. Okay, so we know that f evaluated at 0 is equal to 1. Now we're ready to start plugging in other values for x and y. So we're going to start with x again being like a free variable and then y being equal to pi. You might say, well, why pi? And that's because we know the value of sine and cosine at pi. Okay, so let's see what this gives us. So that's going to give us f of x plus pi equals f of pi times f of x minus 2 sine x sine pi. But again, it's well known that sine of pi is equal to 0. So that's what we've got there. OK, so now we want to think about what are some other nice values of sine. Well, sine of pi over 2 is 1. So maybe we can take advantage of that. So let's maybe go ahead and set x again equal to a free variable, and we'll set y equal to pi over 2. Let's see what we get out of this setup. So we'll have f of x plus pi over 2 equals f of pi over 2 times f of x minus 2 times sine of x times sine of pi over 2, but sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. Okay, so now we have that. Now, let's look at these two setups that we have and see if there's something that we can do to kind of put them together. And there is, keeping in mind that pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi. So here, instead of setting x equal to something free, I'll replace x with x plus pi over 2. So I'll just write it like that, even though what we're really doing is some sort of replacement here. If you want to use a different dummy variable, you can, but I don't think that's super necessary. Okay. So now we'll take y to be equal to pi over 2, and let's see what that does for our equation. So we'll have f of x plus pi, again because pi halves plus pi halves is pi, equals f of pi over 2 times f of x plus pi over 2, and then minus 
2 times sine of x plus pi over 2. Okay, great. Well, let's keep in mind that we know some rules about sine and cosine as they deal with adding or subtracting multiples of pi over 2. And in fact, sine of x plus pi over 2 is exactly cosine of x. So that means we can take this f of x plus pi and rewrite it as f of pi over 2 times f of x plus pi over 2 minus 2 times cosine of x. Okay, and these three equations are actually going to be very useful. So let's maybe get rid of all of this calculation. We'll keep those three equations, maybe along with the f of 0 equals 1, and then we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we derived the following four equations having to do with f of x, f of x plus pi over 2, and f of x plus pi. Then I'm going to leave one more equation for you guys to derive for homework, and that is f of pi equals f of pi over 2 squared minus 2. That shouldn't be too hard to find. Maybe post in the comments how you can get at this equation. Okay, so now let's see what we can do from here. Well, notice that we've got f of x plus pi here and we've got an f of x plus pi here. So we can use that in order to reduce these two equations so that we do not have an equation involving f of x plus pi. So let's do that. That'll give us f of pi times f of x equals f of pi over 2 times f of x plus pi over 2 minus 2 times cosine of x. So again, that's just from setting those two equations equal to each other. But we still have an f of x and an f of x plus pi over 2, so that's a little bit worrisome. But we can take this f of x plus pi over 2 and replace it with this right-hand side of the equation. So that's going to give us f of pi over 2 times the quantity f of pi over 2 times f of x minus 2 times sine of x minus 2 times cosine of x, like that. So let's see where we can go from here. Maybe the next thing to do would be to replace this f of pi with f of pi over 2 squared minus 2 and then start distributing some things. So let's see, that's going to give us f of pi over 2 squared times f of x minus 2 times f of x. So we get that from distributing this right hand side of the equation into this left hand side of this equation equals f of pi over 2 squared times f of x minus 2 times f of pi over 2 times sine of x minus 2 times cosine of x. Now let's see what simplification can be done. Notice we have a term which is f of pi over 2 squared times f of x on both sides of the equation. So that means I can get rid of those. And then furthermore, we have a factor of negative 2 on both sides of the equation. So I can get rid of those as well. So that's going to leave me with a plus cosine of x. Now I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. So now we know f of x has the following form. It'll be cosine of x plus f of pi over 2 times sine of x. Now we need to determine what are the possible values for f of pi over 2. And we can do that using our equation, which is up here in pink. So first off, we know that if we evaluate this thing at f of pi right here, we'll get cosine of pi, which is negative 1, times f of pi over 2 times sine of pi. But sine of pi is 0. OK, so we get negative 1 for that. And then we also get that this is equal to f of pi over 2 squared minus 2 from that equation up there. So putting this together, we see that f of pi over 2 squared must be equal to 1, which makes f of pi over 2 equal to plus or minus 1. That means we have a final solution of f of x equals cosine of x plus or minus sine of x. 
and that represents all possible functions that satisfy this functional equation. And that's a good place to stop.